I'm devoted and hated. I recorded the matrix. I just loaded the bases, and you know I'ma make it. What's going on, everybody? CW Entertainment back with another MLB The Show 23. We are on our Los Angeles Angels franchise here, and we today are just kind of kind of wrap up the season, I guess you know, with some um, some last minute stats. We'll look at the awards and all that, just kind of see how you know we did before we get into the playoffs. So playoffs will be on Monday, and we're gonna go ahead and just hop into this, and yeah, let's go ahead and show it up. Hopefully, this video doesn't go too long, but yeah, let's get to it. First up, we have Shohei Otani gave us 13 wins. Did have 10 losses on the year. Whether that was his fault or it was just because the offense kind of didn't get him anything going. That may have been the case. Uh, did give up 195 hits. Kind of gave uh, the most runs he's given up to, most earned runs, most home runs. About on par for his walks. Second best strikeouts in his career. ERA with 3.49, not the best. Actually, hit the worst he's had since coming in, except the 2020 year. But he only pitched 1.2 innings in, so yeah, not the best there. Uh, whip, it's okay, not bad. Kind of on par with where he's normally at anyway. 19 quality starts. Got a WAR of a 5.1. Strikeouts per nine, 8.5. Four walk per nine. Got around the two, which was the best he's had so far, so not bad. Actually, it's pretty low for his strikeouts per nine. That might be why he's actually declining a little bit in his strikeouts, because he's down three points with that. But yeah, not too bad for Shohei. Then we'll also take a look at his batting stats. Shohei played 162 games this year with 619 at bats, 186 hits, 37 doubles, 10 triples. He tallied that up with 40 home runs. Second time he's hit that 40 home run club. 104 RBIs, 77 walks, second highest in his career so far. 148 strikeouts, so strikeout totals are going down now. I'd like to see that, especially since, you know, he's hitting a lot of home runs, bringing in RBIs. So I'd like to see the strikeout numbers going lower and lower. 18 stolen bases, second highest in his career. And he batted 300 with an on base percentage of 384. Not bad by Shohei. Slugging percentage 586. OPS at a 9.7. Shohei was doing his thing out there. Let us see it. Got hit by a pitch eight times. Well, I don't like seeing him getting hit. Not intentionally walked once. Interesting. Huh. Would have thought he would at least draw him one, but hey, I guess not. Field percentage probably could have been a little bit better. 97. But, oh, uh, he's, he's playing pitcher, so he didn't. We didn't have him playing the outfit at all, so. Yeah, not bad. Shohei. Solid outing on the year for sure. And then we'll hop into our next guy, Tyler Anderson, who pretty much just had career highs slash lows throughout the year. Had 20 wins, which is his career high. Only four losses. Career high in innings pitch. Well, maybe not innings. Well, yeah. Career high in innings pitch. 223. Gave up 167 hits, but not too bad. 49 earned runs. Only gave up 20. Well, actually, how many? Well, he we played 32 starts. I guess 20 home runs. About what, half or almost a little bit more than half a home run a game. Uh, walk 52 batters, which was almost as high. 59 looks like to be the high water mark back when he was in Colorado. 131 strikeouts, not too bad. Looks like that's kind of where he's on par at. Had a career low though in ERA and whip. He was doing his thing out there. 24 quality starts, five complete games. Career high for sure. He's only got six total in his career. And he had four shutouts. Like <laughs> Tyler Anderson was balling. Now, we're going to get into him a little bit later. His ball was only a 3.8. But, yeah, we're going to get into his, some of his stuff a little bit later because I feel like he got significantly, like, disrespected <laughs> throughout the year. But uh, strikeout per nine was a 5.29, walks per nine, 2.1, and home run per nine, 0.81. So, not too bad. Not too bad for Tyler Anderson. Next, we'll hop into Patrick Sandoval, 13 and 11. I believe almost all our starters pretty much pitched, like, the entire year. We were pretty luckily to stay healthy outside of Detmers near the end. But yeah, Sandoval, 13 and 11 on the year, went 200 innings, gave up 185 hits, 71 runs. All of them were earned too, so he had no errors when he went out there. Gave up 16 home runs, 64 walks, 180 strikeouts, ERA over 3.2, went up a little bit from last year, but he got his whip down some, and his win percentage went up, which is honestly one of the more important things we care about. Had two complete games, and he had a shutout last year, so. Good job, man. Got a got a war of a 4.6. He was dealing out there, 8.1. Although it is lower than what, you know, he had the last couple of years. Actually matches it in his sophomore campaign. And walks per nine. Got it down. That's the lowest he's had it in his career. And a .72 when it comes to the home run. So Sandoval, had a, he gave us a really good outing out of the pen. Uh, he's got stuff going up. You guys can see his overall is going up. He's at 8-2 overall. I like to see the home run thing is going up. The white. I mean, he's he's looking good. 
like it. 26 years old. He's definitely been a good pitcher for us. And he'll be a guy we can build with on to in the future. Next, we have Reed Detmers. And, boy, he is shooting up to love to see it. We'd love to his stamina to get up a little bit more. But he's young. He's 23. He's got time to get that up there. Yeah, he, he pitched extremely well for us. Another guy with his career best. 29 starts. He, had, he went 10-7 and seven on the year. He had up 170 hits. We'd like to see him get that down because that's 60 more than what he threw last year. However, he pitched about what, about 44 less innings. So, I don't know if that's going to equate to 60 more hits. I highly doubt it. Especially with his whip just a little bit over a 1.21 so, in that last season. But 59 runs given up. So... Despite the hits going up, the runs did come. Uh, the runs went up, but I mean some of those errors. But the earned runs did go down by two. So and he pitched more innings too. Uh, same amount of home runs, so that's actually not too bad. Thirteen is one of the least on the team. What was we'll showing like twenty? At seventy walks on the year, one hundred forty-eight strikeouts, and I imagine that strikeout number just gonna keep climbing. Like this dude has the stuff to do it. Two point six nine ERA, whip over one point three eight. Would like to get that down some. He did have a complete game and a shutout. And his war was a 3.4 strikeout per nine. Yeah, like I said, that I imagine that's going to get up the, the more he continues to play because the dude can deal. Got to get that walks per nine down, though. That 3.63, don't like seeing that. Home run per nine, though. He's only giving up like one every nine innings, so I'd love to see that. Fortunately, Detmers is out with a shoulder tear. He's going to miss this first portion of the playoffs. I don't know how. Uh, he may even miss the second round, too. Like, it, and that's in, if we even make it there. Like, we still got to deal with the Guardians, but... Yeah, unfortunately, Detmers, he's not going to be able to be here for us, though, in this postseason. Like, first couple of, I guess, outings. I mean, like I said, we'll see how it goes. Next, we got Jose Suarez, another guy who's, like I said, our whole pitching staff, man, they were, they were dominant, especially the starting pitchers. Bullpen-wise, nah, they, they were garbage. Them, most of those guys, uh-uh, weren't doing what they needed to do. Jose Suarez, though, got stuff going up. You got plus five and hit per nine, plus five and walk per nine, plus four and strikeout per nine, like... Love to see it, man. These guys were doing their thing. Another guy, 32 starts, 10 wins, 9 losses, 174 hits given up. His whip is a little bit over 1.1. Um, it's close, it's close to a 1.2, but that's the best he's had in his career so far. 25 home runs was the most he's given up, but he pitched more than he ever has in his career this time. I mean, that's almost 80 innings more pitch. Although, no, nothing really positive that will equate to 11 more, you know, home runs given up, but hey. His walks, you know, it's 43 walks for, once again, almost 80 more innings. Like, it's only 10 more than what he gave up in 22. And he's a young guy, man. He's 25. And he came to the Angels when he was, like, what, was it 20 or 21? I mean, he's been here for a few years. like, And he's showing promise. 5'10", though. Didn't realize he was on the, uh, the shorter side for a pitcher, though, too. Uh, 153 strikeouts, career high. Career low in ERA, 3.63. Hopefully, you know, we can keep getting that down even more. He's got himself up to an 80 overall, so he's definitely putting in that work and he's got a war of a 2.7 strikeout per nine is a little lower than what he's normally used to 7.4 but the walks are going down at a 2.08 so we love to see that let's get that steadily improving jose suarez man just get the steady improvement because we'll take it because honestly like right now our farm system like with our starting pitchers we're looking solid we brought over aj puck from the miami marlins and he finished the year i think on a little bit of a better note than what he came into it when we got him his ERA was a little bit higher. It got up to like a 4, but he worked it down to a 2.79, which is his career best so far. Only 43 strikeouts, but I don't, he didn't play in as many games as he did when he was in Oakland. He played 62 versus 42. Um, got 18 saves. Got 7 blown saves, though. You don't like seeing that, but, you know, hopefully, you know, things can turn for the better for him. 43 strikeouts. He had 12 walks. He's going to have to get that down. He's going to have to get that those earned runs and home runs down a little bit as well. But strikeouts for nine, he's on par. He strikeouts for every nine innings. So he's definitely, he's got the stuff. He's got to, you know, he's 27. So hopefully, you know, we got time for him. Um, we do we got another guy, you know, that we ended up drafting that we'll see if he ends up being, you know, the full-time replacement for closer. But, you know, hey, let's see. AJ Puck did give us some good innings, though. All right, let's get to our batter's max stats here. You're the first one up. We got stuff going up. Unfortunately, his power is going down. So is speed, but he's on the older side. So speed, man, maybe not the biggest ordeal. But played 53 games for us. Um, was hurt early on. He gave us 177 at-bats. Was able to drive in 22 with four home runs. 11 doubles on the year, which was almost his career high. Looks like his career high may have been 13. And yeah, it was 13. So he was definitely, you know, getting some extra base hits. 
20 walks for a guy that had limited time. I mean, it's not too bad. Struck out 45 times, batting average of 254. One of his better averages actually in his career. 335 on base percentage with a slugging percentage of a 407, OPS 742. One of his better ones of his career as well. So, yeah, not too bad for Stassi, you know. We're hoping, you know, maybe a little bit more, but can't complain too much, especially since he ended up getting hurt. Uh, we got Logan O'Hoppy here. He had four home runs. Another guy, another our catcher, man, ended up getting hurt. You know, you hate seeing that. Had four home runs, 25 RBIs. I mean, pretty similar stats to what Stassi had. Uh, batted 240, 295. On base percentage, slugging percentage of a 351. OPS 646. Not the best, but, you know, hey, we'll see. You know, hopefully things start going up. But look, look at the stats. They're trending upward. Like, you love to see that. Don't like seeing his power going down a little bit, but, I mean, his contact's going up. Look at that contact versus lefties. Like, if he can just... He becomes a guy that can just consistently get on base and consistently improve. we will love to see it. Up next, Brandon Drury, first baseman. And look at the contact versus left. I mean, man, Drury, he really kind of let me down, like, when playing with him. I thought he was going to be somebody that was really, really going to be beneficial for us. And it just it just didn't manifest, man. He's He struggled on the year, but, like, during the sim, he kind of picked up a little bit. But then, I mean, you just look at his numbers. 495 at-bats, 26 doubles, which isn't bad. 20 home runs, solid. 73 RBIs, that's the second most he's had in his career. 50 walks, career high. Strikeouts, 86, which dropped by 40 from his last year. But batting average over 220, on base 296. Like, I was hoping for a little bit more. Slugging percentage was still decent, 3.94. OPS, one of the worst ones he's had in a, in a couple of years. So, like, I mean, it was, yeah, I don't, I don't know Drury's a guy that's up for his contract is up or not, but if it isn't, you know, we're hoping he bounces back. Hopefully he can give us a good postseason, man, because we could really use it. Rangifo, another guy that kind of let me down on the season. So his numbers are going up, like, across the board outside his contact slash power numbers, which that's okay. I mean, his contact right is going up, but that's fine. Um, vision is going up, which kind of is weird because I feel like his vision doesn't necessarily translate. Like, it, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Like, his vision doesn't seem to translate, but it's like he did get a little bit better as the sim went on. I mean, man, look at that. He had more triples than he did home runs. Like, that's a little surprising, especially that a guy who does have some pop in his bat, too. So, 44 RBIs, had 38 walks, struck out 63 times, on, on base 309, batted 248, slugging percentage 376. But I know, I feel like anytime I play with him, we maybe got like only a couple of hits with him. Like, it wasn't often we were. Doing too well with Ringifo, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah, I, I guess I forgot to go through the wars with some of these guys, but yeah, war of a 1.5. I mean, that other guy, it, it wouldn't be that high either. Anthony Rendon was a good one for us this year, definitely, you know, finally getting something out of that big contract that they ended up giving him. So, his contact left and power going up by a couple, discipline going up, vision went down a little bit, but then he's got some speed and so he's getting older too, so that's tough. I don't really steal anyway, so it really doesn't matter too much, too much to me. Played in 144 games, 506 at-bats, delivered 20 home runs on the year, which is the highest he's had since 2019, which is why they ended up paying him this big old contract. Because when he was with Washington, he was absolutely raking. Yeah, this is the best he's had since being with the uh, Angels organization outside of, you know, his batting average. And, um, yeah, he only played 52 games that year, so who knows, you know. You double all that. Maybe it gets better, maybe it gets worse. We don't know, but... Outside that first year, which was looking promising. He hasn't really done much since he got to L.A. So, 20 home runs, 62 RBIs. We'd we'll love to see those numbers go up. We know he has the potential there, but, however, he's getting up in age, too. So, it's not the best. 72 walks, which is the best he's had since 2019 as well. But, I mean, we're going to be pretty much comparing 2019 because the last three years, it's not much there to it. But, batting 257, 355 on base percentage, slugging percentage over 409. And he has a war of... 0.5, so not too, not the best, but it is what it is. But good grief, well, why was you stealing so much? <laughs> He's got a steal percentage of a 36. Hey, somebody should have told him to chill out, like for real. We kind of ping pong through our short stops this year. We um, had David Fletcher, had Gio Urshela before we ended up trading him off. We have Levon Soto. So far, our most consistent guy was probably David Fletcher. You guys, you guys can see his numbers are going up across the board besides the vision, which pretty much had nowhere else to go, but so they just dropped it by one. Not too positive why, but batted 248 on base of 285. He didn't play the most. Uh, once we traded Urshila, he probably started getting more and more like reps, so 
But yeah, 78 games this year. Ended up with 75 hits, 16 doubles. No home runs on the year. He's not a big power guy anyway. You guys can see his numbers are in the 30s. But those numbers are going up a little bit. But I'm not ex expecting him to be that type of guy anyway. Drove in 15, 14 walks. Did strike out 43 times. Quite a bit for a guy that played about 78 games. Uh, on base, we got him. Went over that. And let's see what his war is. His war is a .9, so not too bad. Struck out 13.1% of the time. Next, we got Zach Nato, who we brought up briefly. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to make the playoff roster because when he got brought up, it was after the September 1 deadline, I believe, and he's just not able to make the roster, which was unfortunate because I would have brought him on. He would have made it to the playoff roster. I probably I don't know who I would have dropped. Um, I think I still need to go over that because they ended up bringing up Adrian. Uh, Andrew Velasquez, I probably wouldn't have brought him back up here. I probably would have let Nato, because Nato was on fire. He was doing pretty well in his limited time being called up here. Like, five games, had 14 at-bats, batting 500, on base 632, drew four walks, hit a home run, three RBIs, a double. I mean, he only struck out four times, too. I mean, he was, he was doing well when he came up here, and I like to see that. Uh, it looks like, so yeah, war was a .6. I mean, he was... He was looking solid. I was like, okay, man, maybe Nato should have been brought up here a little bit earlier, but we'll definitely probably see him on the roster next year. He'll definitely have the spring training invite. But AAA stat-wise are all wiped out, so we can't see what he did down there. Um, Velasquez, I'm not going to go over his stuff. LeVon Soto, we did actually have up here in playing, and look at Soto's numbers going through the roof. You love to see it, man. Look at that power left going up plus 7, plus 10 to contact left. Got a couple pluses to his uh, contact and power right. Like, good stuff, man. Vision is going up to a 56. He's only 22 years old. Another guy, more than likely, he'll probably be on the roster next year. We'll have to see. You know, He can only play third base, which kind of sucks. I don't know what NATO can only play second base. So, we're going to have to figure that out. You know, these guys are probably going to be, you know, interchangeable, though. We'll leave them in that rotation. But overall, going up to a 67C potential. Look at the stats that he had on the year. He was struggling early, but I'm glad I allowed him to try and develop a little bit more. So in the 184 at-bats he had, had 48 hits, 5 doubles, 4 home runs, 25 RBIs. So showed he had a little bit of pop. Batted 261, walked 15 times, on base percentage of 32.5, uh, stole three bases, got caught twice, but that's okay. OPS 678, I mean, a guy who's not really showing that, you know, he's like this big uh, power hitter. It's not too bad. Like, I'll take it. Seth, like I said, he's 22 years old. Really his first time actually getting, like, consistent major league play. His war was negative. I don't I don't know if that's, off, <laughs> if that's fair to him or not. But, <laughs> but yeah, he struck out 22% of the time. So, hopefully we can get that down some. But, well, yeah, I like him, man. He he was a guy that, you know, he kind of he kind of slap hits it out there, too. And he's a lefty batter, too. So, that's always a plus. Which is also a little odd because... His power versus righties isn't the highest either, but so a little bit better versus the lefties. Man. And he's a decent fielder too. Let's go out to left field, Taylor Ward. Another guy who I was really excited to play with. Unfortunately, he kind of suffered a big knockdown to his contact versus lefties though. Dropped down by 10. Everything else is going up but that. Wasn't expecting to see that. Uh, but had 547 plate appearances, 143 hits, 33 doubles on the year, two triples, 22 home runs, which was on par for almost what he did last season, although he did it in less amount of games, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, 54 RBIs on the year, 65 walks, 96 strikeouts, which you got the strikeout numbers down, which you always like to see. Only batted 261, on base 34% of the time, slugged at a second percentage 45, OPS at a 79. So, I mean, he's kind of around his, like, averages. I mean, he's, I mean, these are better than what his career totals are, too. So, you know, it's not the terrible. And then let's see what his war is. War was a 2.0, so second best he's had in his career. But yeah, it, just, it wasn't much from Taylor Ward. Um, it was it was a decent season. It wasn't you know anything you know groundbreaking. His overall is going up though, so he's at 82 overall. So Joe Adele. Now we didn't really see a lot of him, but man, his <laughs> his numbers are going up. And actually, I think I spoke on it in that one video. Like if we had Trout out there, but he had been able to run that uh that fly ball down the center field, but. I didn't realize Joe Adele's speed was at a, a 96 last 97. So, <laughs> yeah, he he should have been able to get to that ball. Trout, that, Trout's speed is like at 87 or something like that. But Adele's stats, man, they're going through the roof right now. He's got good power. He's young, too, man. So we got some young players on this roster that, you know, we would love to see, you know, keep developing and do a little bit better. More than likely to be on the opening day roster as well. 
next year, but you know we have to wait and see. He only got 17 games this year, so he was in the minor leagues for the majority of the season. He, he, he kind of developed well down there, but bet at 231. He didn't get a lot of time, only 17 games, but we got Trout in the outfield. I mean, that's kind of pretty much why I brought him in, was to pretty much back up Trout. He did hit a home run, a couple RBIs, four. Four walks, 13 strikeouts. I'd so like to see that be down. That's almost a strikeout a game he had. Second percentage almost at 35% on base, 28.6. So, yeah, like I said, we'd we'll love to see that stuff get a little bit better, unfortunately. But it did not go the best. But, hey, you know, we'll see what he can do. He got a negative war. Honestly, I'm not, maybe not too surprised. But he didn't play that much either. So, he didn't have a really opp a great opportunity to get that up. And let's go to the GOAT Mike Trout. For whatever reason, Trout numbers are just dropping like crazy outside of his plate vision. Don't like seeing that, but he played 144 games. Trout stayed healthy for the most part. Did only bat 249, so, yeah, one of his worst career. That might even be his career low, and it is. Oh, outside his rookie year, but he didn't play as often. Well, actually, no, no. Oh, yeah, 40 games. Yeah. So, pretty much a career low for Trout almost across the board. Um, outside probably his home run numbers, which he still ended up hitting 36 home runs. 85 RBIs on the year for Trout, but uh, four triples, 36 doubles, you know, not too bad. I mean, Trout put up very good Trout numbers, but it's still below par for what Trout normally does. Now, Trout is up there in age. Trout's 31. So, at some point, we are going to have to have a replacement for Trout. Uh, field percentage was 99%. I mean, Trout is Trout. Like, you know what he's going to do. A war, six. All right. <laughs> All right, we're seeing guys, you know, talking about, okay, you know, war of a 1.5, 1. 1.2, 1. you know, two, you know, Shaw Shohei was a three. Trout's at a six. Despite his numbers and attributes going down and having, like, career lows in his batting average and on-base percentage, and his war is still at a six, man. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Finally, we have Hunter Renfro, who is up. His overall is actually dropping. He's at an 84 now. He's seeing declines in his numbers, like. And that's pretty drastic too for his power left because that was out of 93. Yikes. So I don't know, man. Renfro, boy, that last game, he, he's telling us, man, he's like, hey, you go, come pay me. I don't know. I, I can't put him on a five, six year contract. I mean, that, I, I just I just don't think I'll be able to do that. But he had 24 home runs, 69 RBIs on the year, played in 133 games, 504 at bats. Bet at 224, which wasn't the best, but he's a power hitter too, so you kind of expect it. Um, on base, only 29% of the time, though. And slugging percentage was down. OPS is down. Like, I mean, he did have some down numbers this year. He had a war of a .5, which is down from what he had last year. So, I mean, he was kind of down in a lot of stuff that he had from a year ago. So, I don't know, man. It's, it's interesting. But let's have to see what you know happens in the playoffs. Because if he proves it in the playoffs that he can you know, come up here, then, yeah, we'll definitely, you know, consider resigning like if he's a big aspect you know helping us advance or maybe even potentially winning the world series we'll see like i said i don't know we may not get make it out of cleveland we'll have to see the angels haven't had a good track record of advancing when they have made it to the playoffs so we'll have to see how that one goes but one last thing before we get up out of here you guys we're going to take a look at the awards not worry about the postseason mvp the most valuable player in the AL goes to bo bichette who batted 323 on the year 36 home runs and 129 RBIs. That boy Bichette was absolutely balling. I thought it was going to end up being like Alvarez because he had the most home runs for a while. And he didn't pass no home runs. But average and RBIs clearly set him apart. With Shohei, he ended up finishing third. So we'll take that all the time. If we can have somebody finishing that top three, of course, we want the guys to win it. But we're not going to complain. I mean, but Bichette had an amazing year. I enjoyed playing with Bichette last year when I was playing in my... Uh, Blue Jays franchise. Matt Olson ends up winning. They had two guys up here, him and Austin Riley. Austin Riley had 45 home runs. He ended up passing Matt Olson. Like, Good grief. And the Braves didn't even advance to the uh, next round. So, <laughs> so yeah, that tells you how competitive it was over in their division. Machado ends up in third place. But Olson batted 310, 42 home runs, and 105 RBIs. Now, here's where I got the gripe. The Cy Young Award. I get it. I, don't, I have no problem with DeGrom winning it. I do have a problem with Tyler Anderson not at least being on the list. He had the best. I'm pretty sure he had the best ERA. He had an ERA in a two. Like, DeGrom sees. Love it. Don't mind it. But it's clearly because of the strikeout numbers, though. I believe he was around like 140 strikeouts or 160. Somewhere around that. I don't, I don't exactly remember where his numbers were. But, like, it's like, dang. He didn't even get in the top three. He had the most wins of, the, or of these guys. He had the most wins. Like... 
a better ERA than all three of them. But dang, did the strikeouts really put the left for you to play that big of a role in how they decide to sign on? At least on the game. I don't know about in real life. I'm not exactly sure what all they'll take into consideration. But I was like, dang, man, we kind of got, feel like we got a little screwed right there. At least not having him up here. Yeah, um, Nash, uh, National League, though, Clayton Kershaw is going to be another Cy Young winner again. Ends up getting another trophy. He did extremely well. Batting, uh, not batting. Sweet Jesus. I, keep, I don't know why I keep messing up batting average and ERA. I guess because they're just numbers up here. But, yeah, <laughs> had an ERA with 2.90. Tony Gonsolin, 2.22. His team, I don't know that. I probably would have gave it to Gonsolin. They gave it to Kershaw. I'm guessing maybe just because of the five more strikeouts he had. I mean, yeah, one more win, but he also had one more loss. So, more than likely, I'm giving this to Tony before I'm getting into Clayton, to be honest. Batting title goes to Brandon Bell. I'm going to just kind of fly through this real quick. Freddie Freeman gets it in the National League. Reliever of the year goes to Evan Phillips. Emmanuel Chase for the Guardians gets it. Rookie of the year, George Valera. Batted 275 with 13 home runs on the season. So, another Cleveland Guardian. Rookie of the year in the National League is Michael Bush. 20 home runs. Very solid. Ellie De La Cruz almost got it too. Honestly, bad a little bit. I guess the RBIs maybe were the you know the kicker to help get him there. Uh, Hank Aaron Award goes to Brandon Belt. <laughs> I'm guessing the average was too good for them not to, but his teammate won the MVP. I, I would have probably given this one to Alvarez, but it is what it is. The uh, National League goes to Austin Riley. Gold Glove, Julio Garayas. We got Gary Cole for pitch overs. We're going to flip through the um, American League. Salvador Perez, Ryan Mountcastle, Tony Kemp, DJ LeMayhew, Jorge Mateo, Dalton Varsho gets it in left field. Luis Robert, Trout ends up in third place for center field. Right field, Hunter Renfro ended up in third place. Aldolas Garcia ends up getting it out there. Slugger DH, I believe this is our only award winner. And it's tr uh, not Trout. It's Shohei Otani for the DH Silver Slugger. We'll take it, Shohei, but... Yeah, flip through these. Trout does end up in third place in a couple of these outfielder ones, but yeah. But I believe that is going to do it for us, everybody. We're going to wrap it up here as we got the postseason next time out. We got game one of the AODS versus the Cleveland Guardians. And hopefully, it's going to be an entertaining one. But you guys, I appreciate the support you guys have been showing on this series. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you guys hit the like button. Leave a, give me some feedback on this series. You know, if y'all have enjoyed, you know, this first year of how we kind of done it. I know I've kind of mixed up a little bit of things, how I've been editing the videos. And right now, I think I'm going to kind of stick with it for now. But if you guys would rather see it go back to the old ways, we'll do it that way too. If you prefer the new way, just let me know down below. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. If you're new here, you know, if you want to keep up with this series, just hit the subscribe button, man. I really appreciate it. As I'm getting closer and closer to 700 subscribers and trying to, you know, continue to grow and grow and get better as we continue with this angels franchise i'm excited for this postseason that we have coming up i'm also really excited for the offseason that we got coming up too but we'll get to that <laughs> at a later point we'll have to figure out what we're going to do versus cleveland first but yeah that's going to do it for us here in this one once again i appreciate it everybody for you guys tuning in i'm out to next time i'll catch you guys on monday hope you guys stay safe out there enjoy your weekend god bless and peace close it out future